This is section 9.4, graph and ray equations for ellipses. An ellipse is the locus of points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points called the foci is constant. The major axis is the segment that connects the two vertices and goes through the center. It goes to the two endpoints and it goes through the foci. The minor axis is the segment that connects the two co-vertices and also goes through the center, and it's going to be perpendicular to that major axis. The center is the midpoint of the major axis. It's also the midpoint of the minor axis. And the vertices are the two endpoints of the major axis. Now there are two standard equations for an ellipse. If it is elongated in the x direction, the a will go with the x. If it is elongated in the y direction, the a goes with the y. And the a squared is always larger. So if we have one is 36 and the other is 81, the a squared would be the 81 because it is the larger number. Now we have our rules. It tells us if, if the um, major axis is horizontal, our center is h and k, our foci is h plus and minus c and k, Vertices are h plus or minus a and k. Covertices is h and k plus or minus b. Major axis is y equals h. Minor axis is x, sorry, y equals k is the major axis. Minor axis is x equals h. And to find c, now this will change for a hyperbola, but the equation to find c for an ellipse is c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, or c is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. Now we have the same concepts for a ellipse that has its major axis that is vertical, but instead of adding your foci and your vertices to the x values, because it is stretched in a vertical direction, we are going to add them to the y components instead. So we need to graph the equation of the ellipse. First, we're going to find our center. The center is your h and your k. Now, the h value is always with the x. Remember, when you pull it out of the parentheses, you change the sign. So this will be h is positive 3. k is with the y. When we pull it out of the parentheses, we change the sign. So k equals negative 1. So our center will be at 3 and negative 1. Now, the a squared value is whichever denominator is larger. So in this case, the a squared value is 36, which means a is equal to 6. Because the 36 is under the x, or the larger denominator is under the x, we do know that it is going to um, be stretched horizontally. And you are going to go 6 units in the x direction. So from our center, we'll go six units to the right, and we will go six units to the left. The b value, or b squared value, is the other denominator. So in this case, b is equal to three, and because the b squared is with the y, we are gonna go three units in the y direction. So we go back to the center, we go three units up, and we go three units down. And then we will just draw our ellipse through the points. Now this time we're going to do the same thing, but we also need to identify the vertices, co-vertices, and the foci. But on this one, the equation is not in the correct form. And this does need to say... 25y squared, not x squared. Now, for this to be an ellipse, it needs to equal 1. So we have 4x squared plus 25y squared is equal to 100. So the first thing we're going to do is make this equal to 1. To do that, we are going to divide everything by 100, and then we're going to simplify. So 4 goes into 100. 25 times, 25 goes into 100 four times, and 100 divided by 100 is 1. So now this is in the correct form. 
because we're not adding or subtracting anything to the x, we know our h value is 0. Because we're not adding or subtracting anything to the y, we know that k is also equal to 0. Now, the a squared is the larger of the denominator, so in this case, a squared is equal to 25, which means a is equal to 5. The b squared is the smaller denominator, which is 4, so b is equal to 2. Now from here, we need to identify the vertices, covertices, and foci. To be able to graph it, we also need to find the center. Let's, so let's start with the center first. To find your center, your center is h and k. So in this case, it will just be 0, 0. Next thing we're going to find are the vertices. Because the a is with the x, we are going to add and subtract the a to our x coordinate. So it'll be h plus or minus a and k. So our vertices, since our value of a is 5, we're going to do 0 minus 5, which will give us a negative 5 and 0. And then we'll do 0 plus 5, which will give us 5 and 0. So if we go to graph this first, again, because our value of a was 5, we're just moving 5 units to the left and 5 units to the right. Our covertices will be h and k plus or minus b. So because our b value is 2, we're going to have 0, and then 0 minus 2, which will give us negative 2, and 0, and our k value is 0, so 0 plus 2 will give us 2. So if we start back at the center, we'll go 2 units up and 2 units down. Now from here, we can just graph it, and we have our ellipse, but it tells us we also need to identify the foci. Now to find the foci, we first have to know the value of c. And we know c is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. Our a squared is 25, our b squared is 4. So c is equal to the square root of 21. So when you go to find your foci, we're going to do h plus or minus c and k. So we'll do 0 minus radical 21, which will give us a negative radical 21 and 0. And then we'll do h plus c, which will give us a positive radical 21 and 0. Now you can graph those. Radical 21 would be more than 4 but less than 5. So our foci would be somewhere in there. Okay, we need to graph this equation, but first we have to get it into the correct form. We are going to have to complete the square. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to group the x's together, group the y's together, and then take everything else to the other side. So we're going to have 4x squared minus 24x. We have plus y squared plus 4y. And then we're going to take that 24 to the other side. Right now it's positive, so to move it to the other side, we do need to make it negative. Now before you can complete the square, you do have to have the x squared by itself and the y squared by itself. If there's anything in front of x squared or y, fared, y squared, we are going to factor it out. Now to be consistent, even though there's nothing in front of our y squared, we are going to factor something out just so we are consistent with our method. So on the x squared, we do have a 4 in front of it. So if I factor out a 4, 4x squared divided by 4 just leaves you with x squared. 20, negative 24x divided by 4 leaves us with negative 6x. And we are going to leave some space because we are going to do completing the square. Next, there's nothing in front of the y, but just for consistency's sake, we are going to factor out a negative 1, just kind of hold that spot. And y squared divided by 1 is still y squared. 4y divided by 1 is still 4y. And we are going to leave ourselves some space for when we complete the square. Now we need to do two completing of the squares. 
we're going to do completing the square for the x's and the y's. So remember to do that, you're going to do b over 2 squared for the x's, our b value is that negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, and negative 3 squared gives us 9. So we are going to add and subtract 9. For the y's, our b value is going to be the positive 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 squared gives us 4. So we're going to have a plus 4 and a minus 4. Now, our perfect square trinomials are just these pieces here. So we don't actually need the negatives. But we can't have a positive without the negative because we can't have things that are going to cancel each other out. So we need to take the number that's out in front of the parentheses and distribute it to the negative so we can pull it out of the parentheses. So this is going to leave us with 4 times x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then 4 times negative 9 will give me a negative 36. But we had to multiply it by the 4 to get it out of the parentheses. Then we're going to do y squared plus 4y plus 4. And then the 1 times the negative 4 gives me negative 4. But we can now pull that outside of the parentheses. Now, we just need to get rid of these pieces. To take them to the other side, we are going to add them to both sides. And we will be left with 4 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 1 times y squared plus 4y plus 4 is equal to 16. Now we can do the factoring of our perfect square trinomials. Now we know it's going to be x squared multiplies to get 9, adds to get a negative 6 is going to be a negative 3. Or remember, whatever's inside the parentheses here with the squared will be inside with the parentheses here. Multiplies to get 4, adds to get 4 will be a positive 2, or it's what's inside the parentheses up here. Now the last step is to make sure this is equal to 1. So what we're going to have to do is we are going to divide everything by 16, and then we will reduce. So 4 goes into 16 4 times, so our denominator when we reduce this will be 4. 1 goes into 16 16 times, and then this is equal to 1. So this is our equation. Now from our equation, we are going to graph it. First thing we need to do is find our center. And remember your center is your h and your k. Remember when you pull them out of the parentheses, you change the sign. So pulling out of the x, we're going to have 3. Pulling out of the y, we're going to have negative 2. So we're going to go to 3 and negative 2, and we're going to put a dot. Now your a squared is always the larger denominator. In this case, our a squared is 16, which means a is equal to 4. But the 16 is with the y, so that means we're going to move a units in the y direction. So we're going to move 4 units up and 4 units down. The b squared is 4, so b is equal to 2, but this is with the x, so that means we're going to move in the x direction, 2 units to the right from the center, 2 units to the left. Then the last thing we need to do is just draw our ellipse. This time they're going to give us information, and we're going to write an equation for the ellipse. They tell us that an ellipse has a vertex at 0, 4, it has a co-vertex at negative 3, 0, and our center is at 0, 0. So we do know to start with that h is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0. If you notice with the vertice, the 0 stayed the same, it was the 4 that changed, and the distance from the center to a vertice is the length of a. So to get from 
0, 0 to 0, 4 is 4 units away. Now, because we are adding it in the y, that means our a squared in our equation will be with the y. So we do know it's going to be x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared is equal to 1. And again, that a we know is with the y because on the vertex we are adding it to the y coordinate. Now, the b value... If we look at the co-vertex, we are changing the x, so we know b should be with the x, and the distance from the center to a co-vertex is your b, and it's going to be plus or minus, so our b value will be 3. It's a distance, so always be positive. Remember, you are subtracting the b value once, and you're adding the b value once, so if it's negative, that just means it was the one we were subtracting. So now we're just going to take our pieces, and we're going to put them into our equation. So we're going to have x minus 0 squared over 3 squared, which gives us 9, y minus 0 squared over a squared, a squared is 16, is equal to 1. You can leave your equation in that form, or we can just write it over as x squared over 9 plus y squared squared over 16 is equal to 1. Either way you write that would be fine. This time they're going to give us the center, one vertex, and one focus. So again, we do know our center is at 0, 0. So we do know that our h value is 0, and we know our k value is 0. Now, for our vertex, we know the distance between our center and our vertex is equal to a. And our vertex is at negative 8, 0. So from 0, 0 to negative 8, 0, that has a distance of 8 units away. Now because we are changing the x, we do know our equation means that the a value will be with the x. So that means the b value must be with the y. Now the other piece of information they give us this time is the focus. And the focus tells you how far the C is away from the center. So if we're at 4, 0, then that means that C, the focus is 4 units away from the center. But to be able to write our equation, we don't need A and C, we need A and B. We do know from earlier that C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So 4 squared is equal to 8 squared minus b squared, or 16 is equal to 64 minus b squared. If we take the 64 to the other side, that's going to give us 48 is equal to b squared, or b is equal to radical 48. Once you know your h, k, a, and b, now we can just plug it in to write our equation. So we can say x minus 0 squared over a squared. If a is 8, a squared is 64. y minus k squared, and our k value was 0, over b squared, and b squared was 48, is equal to 1. Again, you can leave it in this form. Or you can write this as just x squared over 64 plus y squared over 48 is equal to 1. Either one of those answers would be acceptable. Now this time they're going to give us a little bit different information. They are going to give us the two ends of the major axis and the two ends of the minor axis. Now if the distance from the center out to one of the vertices, which is one of the ends of the major axis, is the length of a, then the distance between the two major axes would be 2a, because we have half of it to the left, half of it right, so a and a gives us 2a. So the distance between the two minor axes will be 2b. So again, the distance between the two major axes is 2a, the distance between two minor axes is 2b. Now, if we look at the major axes, the negative 6 are staying the same. Obviously, that's not changing. What is changing in this case is the y-coordinates. 
So we need, know that 2a is equal to the difference, or how far apart it is, from 2 to negative 8. So if we do the larger minus the smaller, we know that 2a is equal to 10, which means a is equal to 5. Now, the other thing you can notice from that is it was the y's that were changing for the major axes, and that remember the endpoints of the major axes are the vertices. So for the vertices, if the x, if the y's are the ones that are changing, it means that the a value is with your y. So our equation, in our equation, we do need to make sure that the a is with the y. Now, we also know that the distance between the two minor axes is 2b. Now, obviously, it is the x's that are changing here, so we do the larger minus the smaller, or 2b is equal to 6, which means b is equal to 3. Now, the last thing we need to find is our center, and we do know that the center of your ellipses is the midpoint of your major axis, and it is the midpoint of your minor axis. So if you remember from geometry, to find the midpoint, you are just going to do x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now it doesn't matter if you pick your major axes or your minor axes, they do need to come from the same one. So I'm going to pick the major axis, so I'm going to do my x1 plus my x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So negative 6 plus negative 6 gives us negative 12, negative 12 divided by 2 gives us negative 6, and 2 plus negative 8 gives us negative 6 divided by 2 gives us negative 3. So our h is negative 6 and our k is negative 3. Now, if they do give you the major axis and the minor axis, the value that doesn't change on the major axis will be part of your center, and the value that doesn't change on your minor axis will be the other part of your center, but they're not always gonna give you both of those pieces, so it is important you also remember you can just find the center. Now, because we have our h, our k, our a, and our b, now we can write our equation. So it's gonna be x plus six squared, all over our b squared, so 3 squared gives us 9, and y minus k squared, remember when you change, put it in, you change the sign, so since it's a negative 3, put it in as a positive 3, over a squared is equal to 1. This time they're going to give us the vertices and the foci. So the vertices is the same thing as the two endpoints of the major axis. So we do know that the distance between the vertices is equal to 2a. Again, we're going to notice which ones stay the same and which ones change. And we're going to do the larger minus the smaller. So 2a is equal to 10 or a is equal to 5. And the a was with the x coordinate. So we do know our equation is going to be x minus h squared over a squared because the a was with the x on the vertices and y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now if you remember, to find the foci, we are going to do h plus or minus c and then k. So the distance from the center to one foci is c, so the distance between the two foci will be 2c. And again, we're going to see which one changes. The foci and the vertices, it should be the same. So it is the x values that are changing, so we're going to do larger minus the smaller or 2c is equal to 6, which means c is equal to 3. Now let's go ahead and find our center. Again, we are just finding the midpoint, and you can find the midpoint of either the vertices or the foci. You'll get the same answer either way. If we use the vertices, we're going to do negative 4 plus 6 over 2 and 4 plus 4 over 2. Or this will give us negative, it'll give us positive 2 over 2, which is 1, and 4 plus 4 is 8 divided by 2, which gives us 4. So this is our h and our k. The last thing we need to find on this piece is we do need to find our value of b. We have a and c, and we know that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. 
c squared in this case is 9, a squared will be 25. If I take the 25 to the other side, it'll give us negative 16 is equal to negative b squared, or b squared is equal to 16. So now that we have our h, k, a, and b, we can plug it in to write our equation. We're going to do x minus 1 squared over 25 plus y minus 4 squared over b squared. We already know that b squared is equal to 16, and we know that is equal to 1. We need to write an equation in standard form, and then we're going to identify what type of conic it is. Now, the easiest way to start this, where it's either going to be a parabola or it's going to be an ellipse or a circle at this point, if there is only one variable that is squared, it's going to be a parabola. If we have two variables that are going to be squared, it can be either a circle or an ellipse. If the values in front of x squared and y squared are both 1 or if the values in front of x squared and y squared are the same. So let's say it's 2x squared and 2y squared, then it'll be a circle. If either of x squared or y squared, what's in front of them, the coefficient in front of them is not 1, or if the coefficients in front of x squared and y squared are different, then it will be an ellipse. So as you can see from this one, it's just the x squared that is squared. We don't have a y squared, so we already know that this is going to be a parabola. Now we need to get it in the correct form. If you remember from when we were dealing parabolas, we are going to group the x's together, and we are going to take everything else to the other side. So since this is a negative 2y, when I move it, it become positive. Because this is a positive 5, when I move it, it will become negative. Now we are going to have to write our perfect square trinomial on the left, so we are going to have to find our value of c. And again, c is equal to b over 2 squared. Your b value is what's in front of the x, so we're going to have negative 6 squared or negative 3 squared, which is going to give us 9. So we are going to add 9, and we are going to subtract 9. Now the perfect square trinomial is just the first three pieces. We do not need that negative, so to get rid of it, we are going to add it to the other side. So this is going to give us x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 2y plus 4. Now we can factor that left side, and it's going to give us x minus 3, because multiplies to get positive 9, adds to get negative 6, will be negative 3 and negative 3, or again, whatever's in inside the squared here will be inside the square here. If you remember from our equation from a parabola, you also want the y by itself, so if I factor out a 2, 2y divided by 2 will leave me with y, and 4 divided by 2 will leave me with 2. This will be the equation of our parabola. Okay, we're going to write it in standard form again, and then once again identify what type it is. So we do have an x squared and a y squared, so we do know it's not going to be a parabola. It's either going to be a circle or an ellipse. And because the leading coefficients on both of them are 1, it is going to be a circle. Now once again we are going to group the x's and the y's because we are going to have to complete the squares and we are going to take the 12 to the other side right now because it's a positive 12 when we move it it will become negative. So we are going to find the c values which again are b over 2 squared for the x, the b value is negative 12. So we are going to be adding and subtracting 36. For the y, our b value is a positive 10. So we're going to have 5 squared, which is 25. So we're going to add and subtract the 25. Now the reason we could go com straight to completing the square on these is because the coefficients were 1 on both of them. Remember, if they were not 1, we would have to factor out first to get the x squared or the y squared by themselves. Now to get rid of those negatives, we are just going to add them to the other side. And we are going to end up with this. 
Now we can just factor both perfect square trinomials. Multiplies to get 36, adds to get negative 12 is negative 6, or again, it's what's inside the parentheses here. This is going to be y minus 5 squared is equal to 49. Because it is a circle, we can leave it in that form. Now the last thing we're going to cover in this section is about eccentricity. The eccentricity is the ratio of c to a of an ellipse. This value will always be between 0 and 1 for an ellipse. We will also find eccentricity and hyperbolas for the next section. Those will not be between 0 and 1. They will be values greater than 1. But for an ellipse, it should be between 0 and 1. And we'll determine how circular or how stretched out the ellipse will be. Now to find eccentricity, you're just going to do c divided by a. But remember, from our equation, we're going to have a squared and b squared. So you're first going to have to find the c squared. And remember, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, or c is just equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. The value of c represents the distance between one of the foci and the center of an ellipse. As the foci are moved closer together, c and e both approach zero. When the eccentricity reaches zero, the ellipse will be a circle, and both a and b will be equal from the radius. So if this is our equation, we need to first identify the a squared and the b squared, then we're going to solve for c. So our a squared, remember, is always the larger one. So a in this case is equal to 10. Our b squared is the smaller denominator, so b is equal to 3. c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, or c is equal to the square root of 100 minus 9. So in this case, c is equal to the square root of 91. To find the eccentricity, we're just going to do c over a or radical 91 over 10, which is going to have an eccentricity of 0 0.954. Since this is very close to 1, it does mean it will be very stretched out in an elongated ellipse.